So we want to graph a function, and my function is negative x plus 4 cubed. And I would like to graph that. So first of all, I need to know what my parent function is. So where's your variable? It's not anything special like in a denominator or under a radical, anything like that. And then does he have a, an exponent? Yes, he does. So my parent function is x cubed, and x cubed looks like this. But two things have happened. So one of them is I've got a negative, which means it's been flipped. So it's going to go like this. And the other one is it's going to be a horizontal shift to the left for units. Remember, always go opposite of what you think if it's attached directly to the x. So then I'm going to go left for, which means it's going to end up looking like this. So when I go to my screen, hang on, I'm flipping. All right, so what do I want? I want a cubic function, which is right here. Plop it anywhere. So it's going to go ahead and graph the parent function. So what do I want to do? I want to give it an x-axis reflection. And I want to do a horizontal shift uh, to negative 4, okay, which means it's going to go to the left 4 units. So when I do that, you see it got flipped and it got shifted. So I'm going to save him and check him. All right, so let's try another one. Graph the following function. So what is my parent function? My parent function is f of x equals the square root of x plus 4. All right, where's your variable? It is under an even root. Okay, so that's your parent function. What does your parent function look like? He looks like this. Okay, so what's different between this one and this one is I got, again, shifted to the left four units. So I'm looking for that basic shape, the one in red. So when I go back and look, my options are this one went up four, down four, right four, or you cannot see, or this one is left four units. So two, four, there you go. So it's got to be D. So we hit D and check our answer, and we are just thrilled. All right, so we now want to graph. Uh, my parent function is g of x equals the square root of x. And what I see is I want to graph uh, what is sitting in front of me, which is going to be, and let me just kind of sort of draw this really quick. Actually, let me pause while I draw. Okay, so I have now drawn the pretty, pretty picture. So we're going to come up here. I'm going to make it bigger. So my parent function is the, um, the blue ink, okay? But, and I already started uh, kind of filling it in for you. The first thing I did was I flipped it. Instead of going up and to the right, it's going down to the right, okay? So I know it got flipped. So that's where the negative came from in front of the square root function. Next thing I know is it got shifted to the left four units. So one, two, three, four. Well, as I've discovered in the last two problems, that means I need to put X plus four. Always go opposite if you're adding and subtracting with X. And now the last one is I shifted the whole thing up two units. So I'm going to slap a plus two on the end. And that means I'm going to shift it. I'm going to pick it up, march up two spots, and drop it back down. So that is my uh, function of the pencil right here. Now, what I was uh, saying in class is that if you've got a ratio of either one up and one down, but one over. So in this case, I want one down, one over. Okay, that is for every parent function we do, essentially, that is, um, that's what you are looking for. In other words, it has not been stretched or compressed, okay? It has not been stretched or compressed because your ratio is down one, right one, okay? So that is that one, and now we're going to go smaller again, and I'm not going to bother filling all of this stuff in. All right, so we want to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So I have, we'll just use the other side of this. Okay, what I've got is f of x is 6x plus 5. And I know g of x is 2x minus 7. Okay, and I want to add these. I want to subtract these. I want to multiply these, and I want to divide these. 
And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to find the domain of each one. So let's make this bigger. All right, so what I've done is I've just recopied everything. So I've got f of x equals 6x plus 5, g of x is 2x minus 7. And I'm asked to find S, f plus g of x. So remember that that is the shortcut way of saying f of x plus g of x. Well, do I know what f of x is? I do. It is 6x plus 5. Do I know what g of x is? It is 2x minus 7. What am I supposed to do to those? Add. Okay, so how many x's do I really have? I've got 8x's minus 2. Okay, so 5 minus 7 is negative 2. 6x's and 2x's is 8x's. What's the domain? Your domain of every function in college algebra, except for if you see variables under even roots or variables and denominators, your domain is all real numbers. Okay, so now what am I supposed to do? I am supposed to subtract. So I've got f of x minus g of x. What is f of x? It's 6x plus 5. So I've got 6x plus 5 minus, and then what is g of x? 2x minus 7. I didn't use parentheses before because addition wasn't going to change the signs. Subtraction is. Okay. Text message. I'm so sorry. All right, so that gives me a 6x minus 2x's is 4x. 6x minus 2x's is 4x's. 5 minus negative 7. 5 minus negative 7 is 14. So I end up with 4x plus 14. What's your domain? Your domain. Unless you see variables under denominators or in denominators or variables under even roots, your domain is all real numbers. Now I'm supposed to multiply. Okay, so that is a shortcut way of saying take f of x times g of x. So I've got 6x plus 5 times 2x minus 7. And I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this thing out. So, and because of time constraints, I'm going to combine like terms as I go. So 6x's and 2x's gives me 12x squared. 6x's times negative 7 is negative 42x. 2x and 5 is positive 10x, which gives me a negative 32x. And then 5 and negative 7 gives me negative 35. Okay, what is your domain? I don't see any variables in denominators. I don't see any variables under even roots. My domain is negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. Last one, what this is really saying is f of x over g of x. Do I know what f of x is? I do. It is 6x plus 5. Do I know what g of x is? I do. It is 2x minus 7. None of that reduces. Okay. So all I have to do now is find the domain of the function. Well, oh my goodness, there's a variable in the denominator. So what do we do? We say this denominator cannot equal zero. Otherwise, my function is undefined. So I'm going to add seven to both sides. I get two x cannot be seven. Divide both sides by two. X cannot be seven halves. X cannot be 7 halves. X can be everything else. X cannot be 7 halves. So that's an open circle. We're going to go this way and this way. So what is your domain? From negative infinity to 7 halves. And then again, from 7 halves <laughs> to positive infinity. Pardon me while I turn off my phone. Um, okay, so uh, what I have from there is you are allowed to use every single number out there with the exception of um, seven halves. That's what that means. All right, so next problem, here we go. I want to have stripey paper, not graphy paper. All right, so we're going to minimize you. So I did all of those things and I gave the domain. All right, so now I've got composition functions. All right, so the problem is let f of x equal, f of x is two x minus one h of x is negative x minus 4. And then it says find the composition of f and h at negative 4. Okay, so remember what we have is a composition function. So it's an operation on your functions, but it's different than addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. If you have a number here, we can skip finding the formula and we can just hop backwards, okay? So this means composition. I'm going to take that negative 4 and I'm going to hop backwards. 
So evaluate negative 4 inside of h. Okay, so h of negative 4, that was lovely, is negative negative 4 minus 4. Okay, so that gives me 4. So h of negative 4 gives me 0. Okay, what do I do with the 0? Hop backwards again. So this part just turned into a 0. Now hop backwards and put that 0 inside of f. Okay, so evaluate with negative 4 here. Get your answer. Take that answer and evaluate it in here. So 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So your answer is negative 1. Minimize. All right. We have uh, complete parts A through E. So we have a quadratic function. And I'm going to pause and draw my pretty picture. All right, so I drew this pretty picture and I went ahead and outlined what we're supposed to find. Okay, ignore that up there. All right, so here is my parabola. I sketched it. It's really not the best thing in the world, but here's what I've got. I want to know what its domain and range is. So remember, these two little arms are going to be going forever left and forever right. So eventually it's going to cover every single X value that's out there. So your domain, this is a parabola. So your domain of any function other than one that has variables under uh, even roots or variables and denominators. This is a parabola, so he's just an X squared. Okay, so your domain is all real numbers. What's your range? I've got all these Y values. I got Y values for days until I hit that number right there. Okay, so my uh, range is going to be from negative infinity. And remember, you always go bottom to top. What is your topmost Y value? Your topmost Y value is positive 2, and it can touch the 2, so you're going to use a hard bracket. Okay, what's your vertex? Your vertex is where it changes direction. So I want 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So my vertex is at negative 3, 2. That is a coordinate of a point. Okay, what's your axis of symmetry? Your axis of symmetry is where you would fold this so that its arms would lay on top of itself. So it's X equals your X coordinate of your vertex. Okay, X equals the X coordinate of your vertex. So I'm a vertical line that slices through the X axis at negative three. What's your Y intercept? Okay, well, I was given the equation and this is actually the first time I need to know what the equation is. Okay, so my equation is Y equals or F of X equals negative two times X plus three squared plus two. All right, so we should know that it got flipped. Okay, I went left three, which is left three. I went up two, I went up two. Okay, so if I ever want to know the y-intercept, I'm gonna zero out my x's and I'm gonna figure out what pops out. So zero out your x's, that gives you a negative two, zero plus three squared plus two. So three squared is nine. So I get negative 18 plus two because 9 times negative 2 is negative 18, and that gives me a negative 16. So if I were to keep going, this thing would hit that y-axis down at negative 16. Okay, what are your x-intercepts? You're going to have two x-intercepts. Where do they hit the axis? One is going to be at, they're both going to have y-coordinates of 0. Okay, what is this one? It is 1, 2, 3, 4. What is this one? 1, 2. So one of them is negative 4, and one of them is negative 2. Okay, so we have now done that. Be a tiny square, go this way. Um, we have, I'm just gonna start this one on the next video.